Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for knife lovers to learn about knives and knife collecting and hear from knife makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make this whole knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, I get a rib splitter knife. We hear from Chris Stroop of Stroop Knives, and we take a look at neck knives, a kind of maligned uh, species of knives. We're going to get into that. Uh, but first, of course, as always, uh, a pocket check. It's the first opportunity of the midweek for me to show off a knife. Of course, that all culminates in Thursday Night Knives, which is always just a, man, it's a cavalcade of sweet knives, not just from me but from all the viewers who join in. So definitely check us out on Thursday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube or Facebook or Twitch, and uh, join the conversation, show off your knives. Uh, but this is what I'm going to show off today. Today I am carrying three outstanding knives. Uh, one of them is going to be given away. Actually, I'm not actually carrying it. I'm just sort of toting it around today, but we'll get to this in a moment. Uh, but in my front right pocket today, is the TRM Atom, such a beautiful and much-loved EDC masterpiece. Uh, from our good friends up in Massachusetts, uh, Three Rivers, Massachusetts, to be uh, specific, uh, Marianne and Les Halpern making these amazing knives in their facility that not only uh, does OEM work, but was the first and continues to be a stalwart of uh, companies out there that was milling out G10 handles for all the big uh, companies from a very, very uh, early stage. So they decided, hey, we're making all these uh, parts for big manufacturers, we're making titanium parts for uh, custom knife makers. We could make our own knives. And uh, we have a lot of people around us that can show, uh, show us the best ways. And they, man, they knocked it out of the park. What can I say? Everyone loves a TRM knife this atom came to me uh compliments of well it was it was a uh, it was a gift in that it was made available to me and was uh, sold to me at a at a lovely discount with these amazing jicarta scales on it these gl hansen and son uh jicarta scales uh this is a second run or not a second run a factory second you can tell from those two dots next to the usa if you're looking at the uh clip side of the blade and that's because there is a slight blemish in the dlc I, I think on the show side i can never remember it's so subtle uh but there's such perfectionists over there they wouldn't let this go out for uh full full price so uh they made this available to me and man who does not like g carta uh what's so special about these knives you ask well they're made here in america they are very limited in their release, but very reasonably priced if you can get it, if you can get them. And a good way to be uh, in the know is through their Facebook group. And you'll know when they're about to release knives, but they, they go very, very quickly. Um, but they're at a reasonable price and they're so, so nicely made. And then they're thin, svelte, easy to carry, very thinly ground, uh, great, great cutters, uh, as robust as you would want from a fully uh, internally titanium framed um, knife like this, uh, nice and slender. And the unique selling proposition of these knives is that with just two screws, boop, boop, you can take off this scale and replace it with one of the many, many scales they sell on their website. Um, without removing the pivot, without disassembling the whole blade, you can change the whole look of the knife lickety split. Uh, a great innovation and and a seemingly obvious one, but they're the they're the first ones to really uh, uh, do it and run with it, and um, they own it for sure. And that's the beauty thing about this is, as new makers like GL Hansen and Sons come up with new materials and new, yeah, just new materials for scales on knives, they can incorporate that into their um, offerings for their various knives. Uh, this is their. I think it's their largest. It's a 3.6 inch blade and uh, dig that knife, carrying it, uh, carrying it today and uh, haven't come up with a use for it yet. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but that's, uh, that's my life. That's not the problem of that knife there. All right. Second knife here today in 
the three o'clock position in the waistband is the Stroop Knives TU2. And uh, it's no coincidence we're going to be hearing from uh, Chris Stroop in the state in the uh, Knife Life News section. He's got a couple of new knives coming out we're going to talk about, but um, I have been carrying this quite an awful lot recently. Uh, this was a Christmas present for my wife, and I keep showing it with the sheath because the uh, sheath is awesome and it carries so well, but the knife is the real star. Uh, she bought this for me for Christmas, had my logo engraved, which I love. Uh, the handle is really comfortable, and I was shocked to find that it carries very well in the waistband. I was thinking that handle would be a little too tall, and then with this sort of extra bit here for the thumb, I thought that was going to, you know, poke into my ribs, but actually it fits, it fits perfectly. I love carrying this knife. So this is on my uh, hip today and it's a 1095, it's 1095 steel. And I really like this sort of treatment of the flats. Uh, you know, I do, you've seen it in my love of the black rock knives. He does kind of a similar treatment in there and uh, I just love it. So an interesting uh, thing about Stroop Knives is that he has automated part of his process, and that is the making of the handle scales. And the handle scales he creates on his CNC mill, and each, each time they come out the same, and they are, man, are they optimized for grip. They are fantastic. Very comfortable knife. Mm. Pardon me, and cheers to you. Uh, we will hear from uh, Chris in a moment all about uh, his new models, but for today, I'm carrying one of his stalwarts. And uh, by the way, it's excellent in this grip. That's the reverse grip if you're listening. Okay, well, let me know what you were carrying. It's always of interest to me. Uh, drop it down in the comments below or call the listener line 724-466-4487 and let us know. And uh, someday, some, one of these days, we're going to create an audio montage. Uh, and it will sound like a um, just a rattling off of all the sweet knives you all carry. So we want to do that sometime in the near future. Uh, I want to thank a new gentleman junkie, Tong Kim. Thank you, Tong, for joining us here. And uh, we have another gentleman junkie just came in today. We're going to mention him next week. So thank you one and all for uh, joining us on Patreon. It really helps. It helps me occasionally buy a new knife. It definitely helps pay the bills. and that's that's what i really appreciate so uh jim and i are always flattered when someone would is willing to trade their hard-earned lucre for some of this uh, knife content and so we resolve to put it to good use uh if you do want to become a patron and join us on patreon you can you can do this this modern thing right here to my left and uh just click your phone up to the uh, screen and it will see the QR code and bring you right to where you need to go. God, I sound like an old fart. I don't mean to. I do know the concepts. I just don't know how to talk about them. All right. So thank you again, Tom Kim. It's greatly appreciated. Okay. Now, speaking of uh, Patreon and being a gentleman junkie, that's our top level of support. What that gives you aside from everything else is it immediately enters you into a monthly knife drawing. This month, we have a very special knife, a very special knife. Uh, I will be doing a supplementary video of this this week just to show it off again, though I made a video of it when I originally got it. Here's the here's the quick and dirty story. Um, Mike Latham, a uh, good, good buddy and fan of the show here, uh, has been on the show a couple of times, and he sent me a few prototypes uh, at this point about two years back. And one of them was that amazing... Uh, gunstock jack that that we've shown here uh, many times that is now up on the collector knives website and then the other prototype he sent has still not gone to production uh, but we're we're waiting to see so i am i am giving away a prototype that has come to me now now this is not out of the goodness of my heart this is because i realized i was being a real selfish sob uh, he came back on the show a second time, Mike Latham, and I was like, "Oh, let me pull out the knives you you gave me." And he's like, "What? You still, <laughs> you still have both of those?" And I said, uh, "Yeah, you know, I wouldn't get rid of them for the world." And he's like, "No, you were supposed to give one away in a giveaway." <laughs> and I, you know, I swear to God, I looked back over our emails. I didn't see that, but we probably talked about it. And like the flake I can be sometimes, I spaced. So. <clears throat> 
uh, I've been building up anticipation over two years leading up to this giveaway, uh, which is of this amazing prototype done by Lion Steel in Italy, Maniago, Italy. So this is Mike Latham's take on the classic swing guard lockback, like the Cheetah made by Case. Uh, so we'll, we will be giving this away. Again, this has not gone to production. Uh, this has an M390 blade, crowned spine, crowned lockback. Um, we have a uh, titanium liners, titanium bolsters, carbon fiber, really, really stout lockback. I mean, there is zero play in this. I mean, it is so sturdy. Okay, what is so special about this besides everything I've shown you already, including this incredibly sharp M390 blade? Well, this swing guard has zero play, zero play, zero play. Have you ever had a swing guard knife with zero play? Probably not, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, so hopefully this prototype becomes the real deal. The only thing I would change is the slant on these quillions. I would put the slanted forward quillion here and reverse it so that you could butt your thumb up against it. Uh, but that's the one thing I would change. This thing is incredible. And the blade length, uh, we're in it exactly three inches, which is big for a sort of traditional style blade. Also comes with this. Uh, this was one of his personally uh, made for him leather um, slip cases. This is not something they sell on collector knives. This is of a stouter, sturdier, more velveteen and gorgeous leather than anything. I mean, they sell really awesome slips on, but this is this was his. So this is a custom slip and a prototype here. And this is the giveaway for the Gentleman Junkie uh, this month. So I'm very excited to present this. I'm, I'm very sad. It's bittersweet because that means it's leaving my collection. But really, it was never a part of my collection. I was just being pres <laughs> a presumptuous materialist. So that is the uh, Patreon giveaway. Thank you to all patrons, one and all, who support this show. It's greatly appreciated at any level. And uh, if you can't do that on Patreon, uh, it's not within your... Yeah, you know what you want to do just thanks for listening that's it thanks for listening all right coming up on knife life news uh we will have chris troop joining us uh for a quick interview uh but i just want to remind you that if you want to do this whole patreon thing just go to the knife junkie.com slash patreon it makes it very easy that's the knife junkie.com slash patreon you're listening to the knife junkie podcast and now here's the knife junkie with the knife life news you know, I've been showing it off a lot, and I don't mean to be a show off. I mean, that's part of what this show is. It's like a subtle bragging, if you will. <laughs> Look at this cool thing I discovered. But this knife is truly outstanding, and uh, I've been carrying it so much. And kind of keeping in touch with Chris on uh, Instagram, and he let me know that he's got two very, very exciting projects. Uh, at the time, they were in the offing. Now they are they are coming to fruition, and and and. Uh, uh, available to the public, and they're very exciting. So uh, we have Chris Stroop right here telling us all about it. Check it out. Chris Stroop, good to have you on the show, sir. How you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having us again. Appreciate oh, it. How are you? Oh, good. I'm doing great, man. So right before we started rolling, we were talking about Blade Show, and you just got your Blade Show uh, assignment. Tell us about it. We got booth number 24, which is as soon as you walk through the door to the immediate left, right there in the front next to all the big knife companies. It's our first year. We're looking to make a huge splash, and we're coming with some big things. Okay, so uh, when I was at Blade Show 2021, it was my my first time, and it left a very big impression. I remember who was all around there. There was Chris Reeve. There was Winkler, as we discussed. There was uh, Hinderer Knives was there, and... Um... Uh, there, well, all the, and then spider co was in the corner. Like you're in a great spot, man. How did you get that such great placement? I have no idea. <laughs> the, the Viking gods have shined down and I don't know. I guess people are, I, we're catching on. People are starting to like what we're doing. Hopefully that's what it is. And it wasn't just blind luck. I don't think it was. <laughs> We've been working hey. really hard to get our name out there. So I think it's working. If it, if it, if it is blind luck, that's good too. Because that means you got a, a lucky streak. Uh, before we get into the main topic, uh, the main reason I wanted to bring you on the show today, uh, I just have to say this was my birthday knife. Very generous gift from my <laughs> wife. Uh, uh, I have a 
discrete carry concepts clip on it and have discovered that this is an excellent in the waistband carry at three o'clock uh in this i i love this thing that this is the tu2 i've made a video of it and i talk about it all the time because i carry it a lot um i just want to tell you in person because i haven't had the, the chance awesome knife i love this thing man that makes me so happy i love hearing that uh, you, the, the greatest surprise and like really happy surprise was how easily carried this is in my preferred method, because uh, I was really vacillating between this and the smaller version. Cause I wanted to get one that I was going to carry, but I naturally went for the big one. <laughs> and, uh, I was, I'm so psyched that it's a comfortable daily carry and not for nothing, but this, uh, this design here fits perfectly into my ribs. When I sit in the car, there's like no... <laughs> No discomfort. So nicely done, sir. Nice. Thank you. That means a lot. My pleasure. So you have a, a big announcement, some big news, a big knife. Tell us about it. A big knife. Yes. Oh, yeah. Backwards land here. So this is a collaboration we're doing with EJ Snyder. EJ Snyder's been on Naked and Afraid six times, I believe, all kinds of other outdoor survival things. He just released his own bushcrafting survival video series he's all over the place he's amazing and he came to us to meet us and as soon as he met us he decided that he had to make a knife with us so this is the knife that we're doing it's 13 and a half inches long it's quarter mm. inch thick 1095 high carbon steel and the blade is about eight inches long this thing is just a tank we've chopped trees down with it done all kinds of bush crafting tasks and tested it and abused it stabbed it into things trying to break the tip off we just all the things that are amazingly fun we've done yeah. it because we have to make sure that it's going to hold up so this is going to be released march 1st keep a lookout for it this thing is freaking cool it's going to have these uh canvas micarta scales it's od green and black it's really grippy canvas um comes with just a kydex sheath with a tech lock style nice. belt clip. Nice. Yeah. The, the tech lock came on this and for, uh, the, the time I got it around Christmas, I was home around the house for a week and a half. And this was on my, on the outside on the belt. And then when I had to go back to work, I'm like, damn, I got to come up with, a, I got to get my discreet carry. Uh, so yeah, I like, I like that you ship your knives with a, with a uh, tech lock. That's a, that's a luxury, uh, luxurious um, attachment. Uh, method if you ask me so nice nice touch there but uh you were talking about the handle um that is something about this knife that is really unbelievable about it how comfortable in my hand it is and then everyone else i've handed it to their their hands find the perfect purchase too um i understand that that's that is where you use a cnc right oh yeah this is machined on the cnc machine um you can see the that's the vacuum system for it right there oh, behind nice. me. Nice. But that's what allows us to be able to make them consistently comfortable for everybody. I can design it one time and do a million thousand tests and get it just right. And then I know it's going to be the same every time. So tell us about this blade design. What what were you after? What was uh, EJ Snyder after in, in the design and the use of this? So he wanted a, a nice sized survival knife to use out and about and in the woods or for any task really and he loved our tu2 or tu1 sorry which is just a slightly bigger version of the knife that you have mm -hmm. and it's got this pattern here and we just added an extra section and then we took the handle from our big knife our bk1 because it fits so well and it was comfortable and just added it to this blade profile so cool. So before we move on to the next knife, I just want to say if you would hold that that blade up. First of all, what are you calling this? We're still going back and forth, finding out the final details. It's going to be along the lines of our normal. It's going to be some kind of survival buoy knife mm -hmm. of some sort. We're still working on the exact naming convention. OK, OK. Uh, so I just want to mention something about this design uh, that is um, uh kind of in 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 uh, sharp relief that you see throughout your designs uh, after this and the smaller one. The, the mini and this are single peaked uh, yep. and I call them kind of sax style blades. And then you get to the double peaked 
Bowie blades. And I, that, that is something that is very appealing to me. Like, I think I first saw that with the Mac V SOG knives from early Vietnam. And I loved, I love clip point blades. And then with those peaks, it's something about it. I don't know if it's, uh, if it has any purpose, but to me, it's beautiful. With it's got a couple purposes. You could block knife defense with it. In theory, the knife is going to skate off of it. You can also still baton oh. with this right here. Right. It's still plenty flat and lots of purchase. Uh, and I'm betting you could baton up even towards the tip because you don't have a swedge that's going to mash up your or uh, chew up your baton. And it's man, that's God. Look at that. That's a chunker, <laughs> man. I love that. All right, so so this is when is this coming out? When can people expect to see this? Uh, March first. It's going to be uh, available on our website and EJ Snyder's website. We're going to release. We're working out the final details, but the first hundred and twelve probably are going to be serial numbered and available immediately. Oh, cool. And then after that, they won't be serial numbered anymore. And we're going to probably have an initial release price, and then it's going to go up pretty quickly okay. after that. Okay, so for that beautiful large thirteen-inch Bowie survival knife that Chris was just holding up uh, with a collaboration between him and EJ Snyder, a survival expert uh, that's been uh, naked and afraid many, many times. So that is coming out March 1st, and that's exciting. We, we're not sure what the name will be, but keep an eye out on uh, Stroop Knives on Instagram and now on YouTube. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but you have another knife that I've been drooling over uh, on your Instagram feed, um, and it's, a, it's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, so we partnered on this one with Dark Corner Concepts. He's on Instagram and has a website. And we made this little pocket dagger. So it's got that discreet carry concepts clip. And I love these things. Um, they're awesome. I can slide this in and out of my pocket or my waistband. It's also an inch and a half for a belt. So here's the dagger. It's a, about six and a half inches long with about a three inch long blade. And we offer it with these black canvas scales. And we also have black G10 with a dark red liner. That looks really cool. The red shows through in the grooves. Oh, cool. it, it's a nice dark cherry red. And it's cool looking. This thing fits real nice in your hand. Okay. This is what I was going to ask for. Now, hold your, hold your hand uh, so that we can see kind of your fingers. I want to see how this knife fits in hand because the... The uh, handle looks very purpose driven. Looks like that scoop on the top is for your thumb, maybe. Yep. And right there. Uh, and oh man, that is that is unusual looking, and it looks incredibly uh, ergonomically sound. Or and it's not sharpened here until further down, so that way your palm doesn't get swacked when you pull this thing out. It's yeah. not sharpened till past your palm. Yeah, it's real comfortable. It's based around the handle of the Tu two. This is the same handle profile. Oh. I just cut the hook off. Yeah. It's the same, same. Ha. That is cool <laughs> because, I, well, so I know how it fits now because this, I, yep. I swear, this fits like a glove. So uh, imagine that, but get rid of the little hook on the end for your pinky And then there. put a double-edged, okay. Yep. I'll take four. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's I don't cool. know if there's four left. They've been selling quick. <laughs> oh, I got to I gotta move. So what is this dagger called? I think he's just calling it the pocket dagger pocket dagger okay it's real nice in your pocket that's what it was designed for is for concealed carry mm -hmm. and somewhere easy in your front pocket i carry mine this is mine i carry it in my front pocket everywhere i go i don't even notice it's there you just forget it's there and then you get to pull it out because it's fun yeah 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 <laughs> and you get to use it people are like oh <laughs> yeah oh i very, didn't know yeah very sharp very functional all right, so uh, before we wrap, I, I want to find out about this YouTube channel. I have seen one of your videos. Uh, tell us about what your goal is with your D YouTube channel. It's uh, Stroop Knives, by the way. Yep, on YouTube. We just started it. We've only released one video. Yeah, look at that cool intro. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> the first video is about how to sharpen a knife using a belt grinder. So we're a lot of our target is going to be knife makers and small business owners or potential small business owners and trying to help them guide through the process of what we've learned along the way as we grow. We have a lot of connections. We've learned a lot. I have a degree in business also, a bachelor's degree that I thought I would never have any use for, but it's been coming in handy, I guess. Being <laughs> so, a business owner, yeah. It might, yeah, <laughs> there's so many things to it. It's more than just making a thing or providing a service. There's everything else that goes into it. That's the easy part. Yeah. The easy part is making the knife. 
Right. The hard part and, is and making that's... a lot of them and not sacrificing quality and being able to keep up with payroll and, you know, business bank accounts. And do you need an LLC or a whatever? There's so many things that you don't even know exist. And you can really screw yourself if you don't do all of these things. So we want to help people with that. I, I could see how it could be very tempting to follow your passion, follow your love. I love making knives all day, every day, but there's a lot more to it. And, uh, it, and especially there's a lot more to running a business around mm -hmm. knives. So, um, yeah, check out Stroop Knives on YouTube to find out a little bit more to get some insight from you, Chris, about, uh, your, uh, not only are you a business, uh, did, did you get a business degree? Not only are, are you, a of, uh, uh former military um and not only you are a knife maker but uh also you have this uh this business mind and people should take advantage of it uh because all those things coming together in knife making that's a benefit it's not a an easy road to hoe and uh any sort of advice you can give people uh, i i hope they snatch it up yeah we hope to be able to help um we've learned a lot of hard lessons along the way and hopefully we can help some people not have to learn the hard way lots of things to figure out taxes to pay and how do you you know everything how do you get into retailers <laughs> what kind of percentages should they be expecting hmm. yeah make sure people don't get taken advantage of you know all those things you're not thinking of when you're just in the flow and enjoying grinding a blade i would imagine <laughs> yeah it's the farthest thing from my mind when i'm grinding a knife I'm trying to relax and <laughs> yeah have fun well, Chris, uh, Chris Stroop of Stroop Knives, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Everyone, keep your eyes open for that super beautiful three-peaked Bowie survival blade, a collaboration with EJ Snyder, survival expert. And then also that gorgeous dagger that is uh, uh, really takes, takes cues from this handle, and you know how much I love this handle. Uh, who is this a collaboration with? Dark Corner Concepts, you said, right? Yep. Okay. So check that out. And also... Be sure to check out Stroop Knives' channel on YouTube. Chris, thanks for coming on the show, sir. Yeah, thanks for your time. Good night. Good night. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. The fact that that dagger has the handle of this just uh, kind of mirrored, you know, so it's got this curve on both sides and then eliminating this. I can tell already, I love how it feels. So I think I might have to get it. I don't have an EDC dagger. I have a number of double-edged EDC um, fixed blades, but there is a glaring gap in my whole EDC dagger collection. I might have to remedy it with uh, that, that, that dagger there we'll see we'll see what happens all right coming up uh we have the uh, state of the collection i'll show off a couple of new knives and then we will get to neck knives a, a very polarizing topic right here on the knife junkie podcast now in its 42nd edition knives 2022 is the annual showcase of the most remarkable custom and factory manufactured knives in one remarkable collection get your copy today at the knife junkie.com slash knives 2022 you know, because I can't stop talking about it, that I have a special affinity for uh, Pakal style blades. It's something that has come up in the last two years since I discovered Ed Calderon and his whole Elvia thing and uh, that whole modality of knives. And I've been following people on Instagram, the whole sort of idea of making these self-defense knives where you carry them tip down and edge in and that's how you use them has really taken it off. And we've seen some beautiful, beautiful designs out there. And uh, chief among them, I'm willing to say, is has been rib splitter knives. I love the name because it, it, it reminds me of two things, the obvious and then laughing really hard. So uh, rib splitter knives, uh, guy I kind of just stumbled upon on Instagram, I think, seeing him linked in someone else's uh, feed that I follow. And I, you know, you know how it is. I ended up on his page and I was like, oh my gosh, this guy makes amazing Pical style knives. And he does a, a batch of them each week and they look different. Each one is handmade and each one is slightly unique. 
This is a model called the, I just was uh, texting with him before, finally got through to him, Drog, D-R-A-U-G. And uh, I wasn't texting him. I'm sorry. It was Instagram DM. And not everyone looks at their DMs. And I get that for sure. Um, look at this thing. It is positively beautiful. This is uh, uh, now I need to get more information from him about the materials. It looks to me like this is forged. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe it's treated after the fact to look that way. I just don't know. Um, but it's chiseled ground. So so it's flat on this side. And then on the presentation side and also the right hand side for uh, the the intended use, which is tip down, is beveled here. Beautiful bevel with a nice upswept uh, plunge grind there. Really nice polished edge. Very, very sharp, acute uh, point there. And then there's the rib splitter logo. You can see. So this is one uh, that I think it's a newer model for him. I've been, uh, when I first tuned into him, he was, uh, I hadn't seen this. And then, and then over the, over the period of time I watched this particular model kind of came out uh, or, or it was in, you know, it was fallow for a while. Uh, but he does these really nice Pical style knives where the, uh, you have the perfect angle from the handle to the blade, which is slightly outwardly canted. He does some double edged ones. He does beautiful handles. They're all very smooth and contoured. And uh, this one has a nice bird's beak here to keep your hand uh, kind of kept in place. I carry this in the in the three o'clock position in the waistband. And you might think oh, that's kind of a slick handle for a self-defense knife. And uh, you might be right, but the ergonomics of it captures your hand. And um, really, the the contoured smooth G10 here is something that is going to inspire you to carry it. Let's be frank. This is something you want to carry close to your body. If it's got hard angles and... Uh, you know, uh, rough textures on the handle. It's not going to feel good against your love handles. And yes, they've developed since you got married. Yes, they have. And uh, they are also going to poke up into your ribs if they're too tall, you know, so and, and too um, angular. So this nice rounded handle smoothed like this slips over, you know, your your T-shirt or whatever, whatever's going up against it, uh, clears it nicely, doesn't snag, doesn't print. And then once it's in hand, you know what to do, and it feels really good. Now, not for nothing, but this guy, and I don't even know his first name. I, I got to get to know this guy because I, I dig his knives, but he makes an incredible sheath. And I have to say, this is not an easy blade sh uh, shape to make a sheath for. This one works perfectly. I mean, really perfectly. It just, you there's only one way in right here, and it feeds in that that oddly, you know, shaped angle and shape blade perfectly so it snaps right in so uh that's the first knife uh that rib splitter i was so excited to find uh this on the secondary market every once in a while i'll go on blade forums and i'll say something to myself like if i see a really nice custom pakal knife i'm buying it unless it's like out of my price league go on i see a rib splitter i'm like no way because i've been following this guy i feel like i discovered him of course i didn't because his knives sell out weekly like immediately but um anyway it was a great thing to see right there on the secondary and then a, a very excellent gentleman right here in uh in my area of the world uh sold it to me and actually i kind of we could have met up to pick it up but uh, uh so that's cool it's nice to know there are other knife junkies close by uh second knife was a gift from my good friend dave uh, this old sword blade reviews. I talk about him all the time because he's so generous and he sends us really great knives for giveaway items. And then he also, um, he and I do these swaps where we send each other knives to check out. We have very similar tastes. Uh, Dave has about 10 years on me and he's a master in uh, Kali, uh, the ancient form of stick and knife and, and uh, sword fighting, the really brutal kind from the Philippines. He uh, So he and I have very similar tastes in knives. We trade things back and forth. And he also gifts me many knives. And I, I appreciate that so much. And then this right here is the latest. It's from Sativian. Now, Sativian is, Sativian is a, excuse me, 
running dry, talking so much. Uh, Sativian is a Chinese brand, one of the new uh, manufacturers that we've been seeing advertising on Amazon. I really don't know much about them. However, I have experienced a few Sativian knives, and they are incredibly solidly built. And uh, at least in the folders, um, they probably have a little bit of, of refinement, uh, you know, in their process left. But what they present for 25, 30, 40 bucks is outstanding. And this is not an exception. Now, look at this thing. It's like an elongated football or UFO shape. Let's call it that or UAP shape. And, uh, you know, obviously that you got to break it. So you break it in half and look at this, man. It's got this drop point blade, very sharp drop point blade with a, a damascene sort of pattern in there. Very uh, deeply etched. And uh, they have a little spider logo here. Just a great little knife to, uh, I was talking about um, this is this good for dropping in the purse? Like uh, the first thing I thought of was like, wow, this looks like a bit of feminine kit. And, and I don't mean that in any sort of uh, bad way. I mean, like I've seen compact mirrors that look cool. I've seen things in tortoise shell combs and stuff. You know, I just like things. And to me, this is the kind of thing that could fit into a, uh, a purse. You know, it looks like something that might go in my, my wife's purse. The only reason I wouldn't is that there is no, it's a friction fit sheath. And so there is no um, way to keep this from coming separated in the chaos of a woman's purse. And then she reaches in and she gets cut. That's no good. So I discovered that, well, not only am I keeping this for myself, uh, but I'm going to add a leather fob here. And I've discovered uh, discovered it's very comfortable dropped in the pocket. It's just long enough at about five inches to uh, orient itself north-south in your pocket and not go sideways and and be at a, a buzzkill. It, it orients itself well. It's uh, pointy and all contoured. It's, it's uh, like a like a body part it just kind of fits in the pot pocket perfectly and then you can just pull it out and use it uh so this originally i thought oh maybe i'll give this to my wife she'd like i'm like no this is going in my pocket this is the this is a perfect uh edc fixed blade because you just drop it in your pocket and then with a, a leather fob that comes off of it maybe uh in this sort of fashion like a what's it called like a snake thing uh It'll be even even more easy to hold on to, but very cool knife. Thanks again, Dave. Uh, I really appreciate it. Always exposing me to knives that I haven't experienced, and and I really really appreciate that. All right, so here we are. Here we are at neck knives. What do you think of neck knives? Please let me know in the comments below, uh, or leave a leave a message on the phone um, on our. Uh, answering service <laughs> listener line 724-466-4487 you're like answering service was it what is this 1993 when you graduated okay uh no leave a uh message on the listener line let us know what you think of neck knives they're very polarizing i think most people don't like them when neck knives first came out i would say in the late 90s is that about right? Late 90s, I was like, oh, really? Have they run out of ideas? Now we got to hang them around our neck. I didn't realize that it was a modality from ancient times, basically. I mean, people people have always been hanging little uh, knives around their necks. And I think it was a big thing in the bushcrafting world before it went, you know, mainstream. I, for one, love neck knives <clears throat> because I have a neck. And any excuse to have a knife on a body part, you know, I, I mean, I'm surprised I don't have big leather cuffs with knives on them uh, on my wrists, though I haven't found a good version of that. If I do, who knows, man? Who knows? Just just keep it out of you with the judge. Right. All right. So first in the neck knives is the one that I carry these days every day or at least every workday. So five days a week I am carrying this beauty. Uh, this is the Bastinelli Diagnostic. And the diagnostic, I carry it on the back of my work ID here. And it because it's so small and the sheath is really nice and the whole footprint is tiny. And so behind my, I don't have to walk through a uh, metal detector at work, which is a, a very good thing. Uh, but um, 
you know, I, I, I don't like to squander an opportunity for bladage. So right behind this thing I have to wear, like I like to say, I'm a tagged human, like a uh, beluga whale they're studying out in the wild. They shot a tag into me and they're chasing me around. And that's what I have to voluntarily take on for work. So I figure if I have to do that, I may as well have a knife behind it. So this little thing is N690CO, and of course, it's a two-finger karambit. Uh, such a great little knife. And yes, it would be a, you know, a, a great fourth line of defense if you had to get someone off you. You pull this out of your little thing and you claw this into them and, you know. Uh, but it is primarily a little EDC knife. I mean, look at this. It It is quite small. It's chisel ground and extremely sharp on that edge quite pointy on a po quite pokey on the pointy end there and uh great for opening packages opening mail tiny little office chores yes that little errant collar on your uh, errant thread on your collar that'll take care of it pretty much anything and it's small enough that you can pull this out and people are kind of like oh well eh. and i'm like no i could still i could still lay waste with this but you don't say that. You just say, yes, it's small and compact, and uh, it's just a little tool. It's like a sewing implement. Uh, the diagnostic, I love it. I love Bastinelli Creations. I love, I love all of Bastion Cove's designs, really. I'd love to have the full complement. I'd love to have the full co collection. But I don't. I have a few, and this is one of them, and it gets so much use. N690CO, Fox Knives, Crowned Spine, Nice Jimping. All right, that is the first and, and these days most important neck knife in my life. The last one we do will be the former last important. Okay, next up are, I'm going to bring three of them out at once. Now, th th these are the cold steel spikes. The cold steel spikes. I have uh, two new gen ones right here, and then this is an old generation spike. I'll start with the old generation spike. This is the, um, this is the hawk bill. And of course, you can see I really bulked up the handle with some uh, with some tape and some uh, paracord wrap because the handles on these things are very thin. That's that's part of the point. They're light, they're thin, and they're supposed to make great neck knives. But I'll have you know that's a four inch blade. This is this is a uh, let's see how long is this thing? You know the the full knife package is about eight inches. That's a pretty big damn neck knife. Uh, but it is slender and light. Okay, so here it is out of the sheath, which works well, and it works fine hanging upside down. Um, but this thing is like a gununting, which is, uh, gununting means scissors. And, uh, or I, I should say, gunting means scissors. Gununting is the, uh, is that downward curving sickle-shaped blade used in the southern Philippines and in Pekiti Tershakali. So I got this because it's like a mini version of that. And then I realized, uh, well, once I bulked up the handle quite a bit because it's kind of hard to hold on to otherwise. Um, in reverse grip, you have a nice long four inch Pakal style knife. Or, you know, if you're if you're more accustomed to fighting this way, uh, you have that. But this is a great sort of neutral self-defense implement. I mean, it's kind of a shiv. Basically, these spike series knives are kind of shiv like long slender pieces of scrap metal that they you know it's smart optimize that scrap metal turn turn it into something that you can sell and uh, i'll buy it i love it okay so that is the spike old school steel on this i don't remember um but i do know with the new generation of spikes i have two of them here i have the tanto which I, I added jimping to on the on the back here. This is a great little knife. Uh, again, that's a four inch blade. So it's not that little, uh, but it's long and slender. The steel on this is 4116 Kruppstahl, uh, Krupp steel from Germany. And um, it is, uh, it's a budget steel. It gets wickedly sharp. It doesn't last too long, uh, but you know, something like this, like I said, it's more of a shank. This is a self-defense implement. Uh, you could carry it daily, like uh, Jeff Cutlery Lover carried his spike for a long time daily and got a lot of use out of it. I'm not saying you can't, but it's not a super steel by any stretch. It, it's definitely 
an economy steel. Something interesting about this knife um, is that there is no mechanical connection between the faux G10 scales. This is like Grivery, um, <laughs> but they sell it as faux G10. It's like, okay, you sell a million other knives with Grivery. Why don't you just, okay. Uh, but so that has no mechanical connection. There are no pins going through. So that is just relying on epoxy. I'm sure it's fine, but there's always that thought that without the pin, somehow it's going to come out when you're batoning it through a piece of oak. Of course, that's a joke. And I rhyme there. So these are zero ground. That's the beauty thing. One of the beauty things about these spike knives is that they are all zero ground. Uh, this hawk bill from the older generation, this tanto, and then this uh, Bowie comes to a zero ground edge, like a scanty ground edge. Very, very, very sharp and easy to strop back into shape once you've used it. This one resides in the drawer in our basement bathroom. So the <laughs> so the bathroom adjacent to the studio, I'm going to call it the studio bathroom. This lives in the studio bathroom drawer, just in case we happen to be engaged in said room and uh, the place is invaded. Boom. You got a, a capable four inch knife uh, ready to sewing machine into the into the uh, assailants. It could happen. It could happen. Heaven forbid. But uh, that's what the these spikes are for. They're last ditch uh, weapons to get you out of a sticky situation. Uh, but I, I like them a lot. They are a bit much for a neck knife, though. Uh, you're going to see this in the upcoming newsletter. I did use this uh, as part of a weekend trek and uh, area beautification session. Okay, next up. This one is one that I uh, found at one of the 6th Avenue flea markets in New York City, where I got several of the Filipino swords up here on the wall in the early 2000s. Um, I used to do that every Saturday after martial arts. I'd go down 6th Avenue, which was my my martial arts school at the time, was uh, right on 6th Avenue, right at the corner of 6th and 30th. And I would walk south and hit all the flea markets and look for knives. And I found this one there once. And uh, this was my first, technically my first like small batch. It's not custom. It comes from um, Mineral Mountain hatchet works m m h w uh but they're a small uh place out of i believe oh now i don't remember where they're from arkansas or north carolina not that those two are confusable but i can't remember I, those two names those two states popped to mind in any case beautiful little uh neck knife i um, bought this originally for my wife when she was just my girlfriend and then i decided to make a kydex sheath for it and melted the kydex around this thing and then spent years kind of chipping away the kydex. Every once in a while, I'd be like, eh, maybe I should try and extract that knife. And I'd uh, do it for about 10 minutes and be like, ah, this sucks. <laughs> and I'd do something else. But eventually I, I extracted the knife and in doing so, haven't quite given it back to my wife yet. Uh, but I did learn of the provenance of this knife. I, I showed this off once before and asked, what the hell is MMHW? Someone's like, Bob, that's Mineral Mountain Hatchet Works. I went to their website, and they make a lot of cool knives, a lot of cool big recurve bowie type things and all sorts of outdoor and hunting things and very cool uh, knives. But I'm I'm happy to have this really nice little neck knife in my collection i think i need to start carrying it again because or i should say give it back to my wife so <clears throat> she can carry it again uh, but i did fix the sheath uh, i made a new sheath that didn't work for a long time and then recently fixed it and that's this and it works great now and so the whole drama stupid drama around this knife is gone so someone has to start carrying it and using it and it's going to be my wife, I guess. All right. Next up is the Mike Emler Kiridashi. Mike Emler, you know him. He's crazy sharp. Uh, that's his uh, company, Crazy Sharp. They make, they sharpen knives and he designs and make knives. As a matter of fact, one knife missing from this batch here is the Sea Snake, a, a, a neck knife of Mike Emler's design that I have been intending to buy and just haven't gotten yet. But he sent me this. 
and it's such a great little now it i had it as a for a while as a neck knife i had the threads through there it hangs perfectly uh so that it's it hangs just like that you know sometimes you worry about if something isn't symmetrical that it's going to hang weird and this does not it hangs perfectly so nicely done uh mike emler did not make this sheath uh i, I do not remember who made the sheath but uh it's a really well done uh, affair here he's got the uh, in the waistband strap as the uh retention strap and let's look at this now i added the little uh, paracord fob uh, just to give it a little extra length but this is 100% little utility kiridashi and let's look at it here okay so you can see it's a uh, or if you can see it it's about an eighth of an inch uh, yeah it's about an uh it's it's like three sixteenths of an inch thick it's got a very nicely chisel ground blade 100 percent chisel ground all the way to the edge and it's screaming sharp and this is one of those knives that uh i use around here it's this resides on my desk it gets used for a lot of little random tasks and uh i love it for this and one thing i also love to do with this is meditative i was about to say nervously but it's not nervous meditatively strop this knife it doesn't need it it's, it's incredibly sharp but it's fun to strop for some reason because i feel like every time i strop it i give it i get it ever sharper i love chisel ground blades and uh, mike emler did a beautiful job on this thing and also this sort of rock pattern on the spine it goes all the way around the periphery is really nice it's not jimping but it gives you very nice index indexing and i would even argue that in, it increases your grip now for me uh, a key ingredient is this fob be, be, uh, because i find i get a lot of power between the tension of gripping the fob with my last two fingers and pushing uh pushing and pulling with my thumb and forefinger here and you can get a perfect perfect grip to do you know utility work with this so really nice job i really dig this thing thank you mike for sending this along months back i i love this check out mike emler's sea snake made by artisan and uh and brought to you in aarp9 steel their proprietary steel uh next up is another cold steel yes that's right they do a lot of neck knives uh lynn thompson carries a lot of neck knives and swears by them and um that makes sense to me uh, so this one was designed by uh, the great and powerful Andrew Demko. This is a Kiridashi. Andrew Demko is a, I don't want to call him a Japanophile, but his dad, uh, you know, the, the family business was, was an Aikido studio. So he he's, he's familiar with uh, Japanese martial arts and, you know, more than familiar with Aikido. And um, so this is a Kiridashi, the Japanese utility knife in neck knife format this was from the mini tack series the mini tack uh i think the only surviving mini tacks now are the tanto and the bowie unsurprisingly but it started with uh this kiridashi which is has a very extremely acute distal taper delicate tip um i bet i bet they got a number of these sent back from people being mama luke's with them and breaking them but uh, if you use it properly, this is an incredibly acute and, and wonderful knife to use for that point. Aus 8 steel. Uh, but when they, and, and then this sort of, uh, again, a faux G10, it's, it's like peel ply grivery, basically. But uh, when this first came out, they had this, they had a big fat uh, skinning blade, and then they had a curved sort of Persian y kind of blade, and then they had the Tanto. And then, uh, eventually they introduced the bowie and then the other models kind of went away besides the bowie and the tanto but what a great great knife such an excellent grip this is a three finger grip really uh and it fits great with that sub hilt and this deep thumb swale you have full control right there it's it's almost a bonus that you get to put your other fingers on there it works so well so yeah, the thing that has kept me from using this uh, and carrying it a lot is the sheath. And I've never bothered to make a more low profile 
Kydex sheath, but this could this could really use one and uh, would be a great daily carry. Uh, drop in the pocket knife. If you had a leather slip that had a reinforced bottom <laughs> so that the tip doesn't just poke through every time you put it in there, this would be an excellent uh, just front pocket knife. Love this light little cool thing. This is what I love Cold Steel for. There are 8 million trillion cool little models. Love it. Okay, next up, another company that has 8 trillion models um, and that I love, and that's Topps Knives. Uh, Topps Knives, man, I really dig them. I love how deep their bench is. Let's put it that way. And you know me, I don't use sports analogies. If if I do, it means it's got to be something pretty big. Uh, but right here, this is their MSK 2.5. It was uh, one of the early, one of the knives earlier in their um, uh, shifted focus or pivot, as we say in the corporate world, their pivot to more outdoor and uh, bushcrafty knives. You know, they started off in the military and tactical world, and then with the uh, Brothers of Bushcraft knife and many, many others uh, around that time, sort of shifted into the, well, we're also outdoors and camping and survival, and this was one of those knives. Uh, uh, this little MSK 2.5, it's got a three-inch blade, right? Three. Oh, I feel like a fool. It's a, it's a, it is a 2.5 inch blade. I, I thought for some reason they were getting clever with it. Uh, but anyway, great little micarta handle, red liners, and uh, 1095 steel, which is the standard for um, for tops knives. Though on some of their self defense knives, they go with 154 cm, and they occasionally go you know with other steels also. But it's mostly 1095 and 154. So with 1095, of course, that's a high carbon steel. You have to coat it. They, they do this uh, traction, black traction coating on it, uh, which next to the um, natural canvas micarta, which has taken on my, my filth and funk, uh, really looks nice. It's a pleasing color combination. I put on this, uh, this red fob here to complement the red liners and just a great light, super capable neck knife this is probably well i was gonna say this is probably one of the most capable knives on the on the deck today but i i don't know if i can say that for sure but just excellent small and it's got a scandy grind with a micro bevel everyone loves a scandy grind uh tops knives it was kind of a big deal when they put a tiny micro bevel on the on the scandy grind like oh it's not a scandy grind now okay all right calm down uh, that that little micro bevel is just to make that edge slightly less fragile because that fragility is what makes that grind so damn good and so damn sharp. You can afford to knock a little bit off uh, to make it so that the thing isn't going to break on you. Uh, at least I think that was their philosophy. <clears throat> All right. Next up, CRKT, the Obaki. Okay, so this is a... Uh, uh, Lucas Burnley design, and I, I think maybe I haven't been emphasizing the sheaths uh, as much as I should, but sheaths are very important with neck knives, obviously, because most neck knives orient the handle downward, and so you have to have good retention. Otherwise, you're going to have a knife falling out, uh, you know, <laughs> and that's not a good look. So you got to have a good sheath. All the sheaths here, I'm just going to say, are are excellent in one way or another. This one is no exception. Also, it comes with a little skull lanyard bead, which is subtle and cool. All right, let's let's look at this knife. So this is the Obaki, uh, designed by Lucas Burnley. Yes, it looks like a fixed bladed version of the Quaken because it's a Quaken style knife, and um, you know Lucas Burnley is known for that and the six trillion iterations of that knife uh this is a obviously a different series but similar blade shape extremely sharp that's 8 cr 13 i believe um you know as crkt is wont to do but they have this sort of splash ouch damn sorry i just poked my uh, middle finger with it. they have a, a sort of splash pattern on the blade there acid etched which is kind of neat i could do without it but it's kind of cool the the uh, blade is hollow ground, very slender and very sharp. 
uh, up. <laughs> let's see, is this bleeding? Uh, will be in a minute. Uh, upward facing, but the star of the show is this handle. It's got the ray skin and the epoxied uh, Sukimaki wrap there. And you can see when you look down from the top, from the spine, the alternating peaks make for incredible grip. And this was a knife that I got that really hardened my interest and love for the Sukumaki wrap, the, the Japanese style samurai sword wrap, if you will. Uh, when, when you epoxy, when you put epoxy resin on that lacing, it becomes incredibly rigid and incredibly stiff. And what a great grip you get on this knife. I uh, love this thing. This is an, one of the neck knives I carry when I go a walking in the woods. It will be this or one of the cold steel spikes because they're nice and long and they're, I don't know. I, I just like them. They seem very, very capable if you needed them in a, a desperate situation and not for nothing, but every once in a while, they'll find a body in the park. I go walking in not, not too often. Uh, it's happened once in the last 10 years. Let me put it that way, but that was enough. Okay. Next up is uh, second to last. This was a gift for being a best man at uh, my very, very good friend, Mike's uh, wedding. Um, back in the day and uh, this is the double agent this is a knife this is a knife that i wouldn't pick for myself uh these days back in the day i would have picked it no doubt uh because it's got two rings and i'm i'm not convinced that rings are so safe for your hand <laughs> but uh and i've thought about removing either one of the rings or both of the rings you could do something really cool with this but since it was a gift and since it it marked an occasion with a friend. I'm going to leave it as is, though I did pump up the handle quite a bit. It's a very slender handle between the two rings. Uh, there is uh, some skateboard tape there, and then there's some some uh, uh, electrician's tape, and then around that is this uh, jute wrap, which I like the way it looks. I like the look and feel of jute wrap. Plus, it has a nice sort of cushiony feeling to it. Uh, but just a great knife. They they put this thing out. It's so thin. It's so thin and then so broad and then so hollow ground. It's like it's like a very, 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 very good cutter. Not like it is a very good cutter because it's barely there. It slips between the atoms, if you will. Uh, this is the double agent two. the double agent. One is like this, but it's a hawk bill. So the blade is curving downward, not to be confused with a karambit. If you're into karambit, um, training and, and that kind of manipulation and flipping, you're going to want to remove this front ring because it is kind of a buzzkill unless you like to hold the knife like this. But that sort of defeats, kind of defeats the purpose because it negates the angle of the blade to your hand. Anyway, double agent, very cool blade. And if you're into um, True Detective on HBO, it's an old series from some a number of years back. The second season... The female lead played by Rachel McAdams is really into knives. And uh, I love that aspect of her character. And uh, she carries one of these in her boot, except it's the one with the, the hawkbill blade, because that's more Hollywood. It looks more menacing. Um, so you can check it out there. Interesting, shield, uh, interesting sheath thing happening here with the double agent is that this is sort of, if you can see uh, a cutout here in the, in the, um, Grivex or Secure X, I mean, and you have to push that down to release the sheath. So that locks it in. All right. Last but most certainly not least is probably everybody's favorite neck knife and probably the most, uh, you know, promulgated throughout our society. Neck knife right here is the uh, is the minimalist. I love this thing uh, designed by Alan Foltz. This is on my this used to be my. Uh, my work ID carrier thing. And then uh, and this would hang down. No one ever asked what it was. No one ever asked what it was. I would have been like, is that a knife handle? <laughs> you know, like it looks like it, but here I have it uh, on the, on the back here. And I have, let's see, I have the Warncliffe version of this, which I think I may have given to someone in a, perhaps a moment of slightly buzzed generosity, um, cause I can't find it and I vaguely <laughs> remember giving it to someone, but I hope they're using it in good health. Uh, this is the Bowie. I think it's a beautiful Bowie shape. Uh, very useful. It's a, um, hollow ground blade and this little handle just fits so perfectly 
in hand. I mean, and I have handed this to with those big choils there. I have handed this to giants that I work with, big big guys that I work with who have thought this felt good in hand. And my my little daughter can hold this and it feels good in her hand. And the story goes that uh, Mr. Fultz, uh, the, the custom knife maker who originally designed this, you can still buy custom versions of Alan Fultz's minimalist designs, but he uh, developed this knife over a long period of time and got it in a lot of people's hands and just sort of settled on this size and shape for the handle. And it just seems to be universally nummy and comfortable <laughs> nummy. I don't use nummy often, but yes, it is. It is nummy on my hand, not my tummy. Uh, they just came out with a version of this this year that I have to get. It's three and a half inches. So it'll come out here and it's a um, compound ground tanto. So definitely look for that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, do you like neck knives or are you a hater? Let me know. Let me know. And if you are a hater, that doesn't mean you necessarily hate. Obviously, obviously you love the blade portion, the handle portion and all that. You're just not into the carry. I get it. But let me know. Let me know what you think about this. Is there a future for neck knives? They've been around as far as I can calculate uh, 15 years, 15 years at this point or so. They've been big. Are they going to stick around? Or are they a fad like the front flipper, which will go the way of the dodo? I'm just kidding. I think they're pretty cool. All right. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. So, you know, every time we upload new videos, I've been doing a lot of close up videos lately. Lately, people are sending me things to look at, and I really appreciate it. Also coming up on Sunday, episode 290 of the Knife Junkie podcast is our second talk with Kerry Orefice of Off Grid Knives. Such a cool dude making amazing knives designing and having built for him these incredible uh, robust folders and edc so definitely check that out all right i think that's me for jim working his magic behind the switcher my name is bob demarco saying until next time please i beg of you don't take dull for an answer thanks for listening to the knife junkie podcast if you enjoyed the show please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com for show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.